This is the Algo Laser Alpha Mark II, and Algo sent it me for a review, and we did an unboxing in video 2296, and then you probably didn't see it anymore. That doesn't mean it's not getting used, that means I'm using it for something, but I tend to focus on the job rather than the tool, and I tend to talk about tools when I feel like talking about tools. Because one of the great things about this is you're doing exactly the same thing that you do with hand tools, just quicker. I mean, if you think about it, whenever you're building something, you're basically taking flat two-dimensional shapes and arranging them in three dimensions. I mean, of course, it has its restrictions. Every tool has its restrictions. For instance, gears. Putting a normal envelope gear, a nice flat spur gear, well, you know, that's pretty easy, a little time-consuming. Try to cut a bevel gear and you'll find it's very difficult unless you have the setup for it. Well, it's the same here. But the workarounds are things that really have a think about what people were doing before. For example, the lantern and peg gear. It's a very venerable gearing system that's been around for centuries. Da Vinci used it in some of his awesome machines. It was used in mortar mills and it's still used today. When you think what hypercycloid and cycloid gears are, they are in fact just lantern gears. So it, it can be used with a little bit of thought to create just about anything. The main difference between something like this and hand tools is just speed. I mean, this will engrave, I think it's something like 30,000 30, millimetres per minute, something like that. It's pretty lightning fast. So if you were sawing something out, you'd be at it for a while, this will do it in minutes to seconds. So that's pretty much an advantage. This machine, actually, I think it's about uh, 670 US dollars. So again, not a cheap machine, but certainly more affordable than something like the X-Tool, which is about four, four and a half thousand. It's a 20 watt laser, and one of the main issues, I think, with it is at placing everything. It can be a bit of a drag when you're trying to place stuff to get it exactly right. I mean, you can press a little sort of framing button and do a frame, and then you jiggle it around and you get it placed. But they sent me the Pro Kit, and that included this thing, which is the smart camera. The smart camera is supposed to be able to um, ease that job of placing, and I certainly mean to try that and find out whether it does or not. Now, I didn't get what they're calling the safe kit. The safe kit is where you have an enclosure. Uh, I've got these things instead of the safe enclosure. It doesn't bother me if it bothers you, get the safe enclosure. Um, but it is one of the things that's going to leave a lot of fumes, because obviously I'm inside, and really it's better to work with this in a dedicated space where you don't mind it fuming or have an enclosure where you can vent that fuming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it from this stuff, which is a basswood. Uh, because I, I quite like the smell of burning wood as it happens, so if a little bit escapes around here, I'm not going to be too bothered, and I have a lot of it. So I don't really want to be burning acrylic, although this will cut through black acrylic 8mm in one pass. Its maximum, I believe, is 50mm. So uh, this thing, I think... Uh, Although this is three millimetres, I intend to build things up to six and nine millimetres because I just don't want to buy more basswood, so I'll stack them up. But this will cut through 20, 25 millimetres of wood in a single pass, and of course you can always multi-pass. The head is a 20 watt diode laser, so another restriction on those blue diodes is they won't cut clear acrylic for all the best wool in the world. So you're going to need coloured acrylic, acrylic, and of course black is going to be the best, but it will engrave and slice through wood like you wouldn't believe. Remember, pun not intended, remember the test we did, we did a, a square test to find out what the settings were for basswood as well, and I'm going to use those settings. Right, what I want to do is to make an orrery out of wood, because I think it's a beautiful thing. So, of course, I went to Tinkercad and I drew up this. Now, I only showed the essential parts, not the duplications, but as you go through the build, you'll get the idea of what we need doubled, like all the gears, for instance, so the legs need six and so on, but I cover that in the video. I also created this in Tinkercad, which is frameworks for the planets. So there's Sun, Moon and Earth there in framework. I would, of course, put these on Thingiverse and they'll be STL files, but if you can't convert those to SVG, maybe you shouldn't be handling a computer. Then it's really easy, upload them to Tinkercad so that you can play around with them if you want and export them as SVG files for cutting. Anyway, now let's get these cut out. 
And there they are cut out. I mean, these things are as delicate as fish bones. They're really quite beautiful. And we have minimum charring on there, which I thought was really cool. Okay, so Earth, Moon. All we have to do is slot these into here and a little bit of glue just to help them fix. And they just slot in all the way around there, top and bottom on the Sun and the Earth. And there's only a central one on the Moon. How quickly you make these things astonishes me, actually. Anyway, we're going to put a central rod down there so we can attach it to our mechanism. And for that, I've got a bit of 6 mil dowel and we feed it through those holes. We're going to cut it off into lengths with this tiny little saw, which I think is really cute, and put those in place. But we have a moon, an earth, and a sun. Now some gears. So to make the planet carrier, we need that bit here. Now to help with this, I've got a bunch of these. These are 30 millimeters long by six millimeters dowels. I mean, if you want to use something like that and cut it to length on your tiny, tiny saw, feel free. I'm going to use dowels because it'll actually make it all look quicker for me. If we have a look at here, you'll see that there are three holes all in a line. The sun goes in the center hole at some distance, say about there or so, something like that. Again, you're just going to choose yourself, really, because we can change this distance. You stick it in there, glue it in, and saw it off. So it's like that. Now, in these two holes next to it, we put in some of these 30 millimeter dowels. And you notice on the sun, I've put a spacer, of which I've cut loads, at the top and the bottom to hold it all a bit firm. And one goes on the top, and one goes on the bottom. And we put one in here, and one in here. Like that. Now then, all of the gears come in double sections. That's because the basswood's three millimeters and I want six millimeters. So we have to join those two together to make a six millimeter gear by lining up the teeth and gluing them together. Okay, we're gonna need that tiny gear and that there. Now the earth goes through the big end right there. So we'll put on some spacers to pack it, pop it through there, another spacer on the bottom, and then that gear on that so that it's like that. Now I've also positioned the moon at what I think is a sensible height, that's at the equator of the Earth, and I've put a space at top and bottom to hold it in place, and I can cut that one off neatly, but don't cut that one off just yet. So this big gear goes in that hole there. It gets a 30 millimeter six mil dowel, goes in there, spacer at the bottom, spacer at the top, then feed it through that hole, and put another spacer on there, making sure that that's free to turn. When that's dry, we can cut it off. Now the small gear goes at the bottom there, with this medium gear going on the top there, and we use the usual dowel and spacer arrangement. So spacer, gear, spacer, this bit, spacer, gear, spacer. So when you've done that and paid particular attention to trimming that one off, you can take this entire assembly and slot it into there. You needed to trim that because that needs to clear. Then of course we can put a spacer on there and glue it in place. And when we saw that bit off there, there's our Sun, Earth, Moon, Planet carriers. And of course when we twiddle that gear there, the Sun rotates around the Earth. So that gear will be moved when we rotate the whole thing. Now, you might have thought it was a crazy number of spaces when I put those spaces in there, and sure enough, it was quite a lot. But it is how we make sure that we can support this and that this actually fixes in the hole where it can rotate and everything's are nicely lined up because they're more or less at the equator of each other and I think that looks neater. Right, we now need to do the main bit. To make the cage gear or lantern gear, I've drawn up this. You're also going to need 17 of those 6mm by 30mm pre-cut dowels and quite a lot of spacers, something like 40 or 50 of them. Okay, so to make the cage gear, I've got these two discs, a whole bunch of spacers, in fact 22, and five of my pre-prepared dowels. Each dowel gets one spacer on that side, feeds on there, and then the other spacer on there, like that, and all five get inserted. Then drop five more spaces on, put that disc on top, five more on there, and glue it down. So cut off a length of six mil dowel, and 21 millimeters in, glue a spacer on, so it's like that. Then feed that into the cage all the way through. Finally, glue another spacer on the bottom there, and that will then become the main drive gear.
Now for the driven gear, take the larger gear and then something as a guide. Here I've got a stack of four small discs I'm going to use for something else, but that means they're 12 millimeters high. So if I pop that on there, then I can take 12 of these little dowels, and now you know why I'm using dowels, because so far that's 17 to 20 of them. Drop them in there all the way around, put a spot of glue on them, and then pop that in place. Then when that's dry, flip them over, put another spacer on the other side, and then saw all these ends off. So that it looks like that. This will be the driven wheel which drives the whole planet. So it'll be attached to the sun and will drive everything. So these are all the bits you're going to need for the base, including about a gajillion spacers. Now we'll put these on thingiverse, but I won't put all of them on. I'll put on one example with an indication of the number. So something like leg times six, spacer times 100. Something like that, because I don't want to encourage you to use Tinkercad. Put them into Tinkercad, play around with them, duplicate them as much as you want, export them as SVG to LaserCut, or if you want to 3D print them, export them as STLs, or merge them to make a more comprehensive 3D print. So one of those things you can do so many things with. Equally, as I think about these things, I think of them in parts. So those things we're using Sun, Moon, Earth, they're just spheres. You could make Christmas decorations out of them if you wanted to. The lantern gearing system that we've used could be used in any machine that you might want to build. So I like to break them up in parts so that the parts are useful and then we can put the parts together to create a whole machine. Right, these are the legs. Now there should cut six of these but they get doubled up so you end up with three legs. So just glue them back to back like that. So take your cage, put another spacer on there but don't glue it. And then put that one on there. And finally, another spacer on the back there, but you do glue that spacer, making sure that you don't glue it to this upright here. Take one of the legs, pop it onto the bottom plate where the notch is, and then when you put it into the notch, just put a pencil mark where that leg comes to. Now take this piece and glue it at the pencil mark so that it's in line with the notch. Now take your gear, cage gear, slide it in, and then make sure that lines up with the edge of the circle, put a pencil mark on there, and saw that extra bit off. Glue an extra spacer on there, and then we can add that bent leg, and glue that upright on, making sure that it's square. Then we can slide this assembly in, and line it up to make sure that that's free to spin. Now glue on the other legs, using this second disc here as a template, line it up and glue the legs in place. Now I can take the second disc and that larger disc and glue them on there so they're lined up and when you've glued them on there you can feed that through there. Then we can take that whole assembly and just drop it in there lining up the notches and gluing it in place. And then check that whole assembly is nice and free to spin. Now we should have two ring gears and one ring gear with these on them. They are glued together making sure that the gear teeth all line up. And then that assembly gets glued onto the notches on the legs. So there's two of these gears which also get glued on top of each other and then that assembly gets glued onto that. Again making sure that everything's free to spin once that's glued on. Okay, to make a handle, take this bit and at the narrow end, stick a piece of dowel in there, space it back and front. And glue that down. Then take this section, put an extra spacer on here, handle, bit of glue, and then another spacer, like that. And then when you turn the handle, that section should turn nice and smoothly. And you'll notice I've also cut off the extra bit that was sticking out of there. Okay, last thing, unite the planets with the base. And you do that with those two prongs that are sticking out. You need to saw them off to six mil, but you do that by putting a couple of spare spacers on, sawing them to the spacer, it'll fit. And of course we turn the handle, and it will do what an RRE should do. There we go. 
the sun rotates, the earth rotates, and the moon rotates about the earth, which is pretty cool. The sharp eyed amongst you might have noticed there's been a change, and it's right here. Instead of having a train of three gears, you've got a train of two gears. So that's the small gear attached to the plant of the earth now. Instead of it going on an extra gear, that extra gear created extra torque, and without it, it still works just fine. The files are correct, and you follow the same procedure. It's just instead of putting in that middle gear, you stick the planet Earth on top. But what the hey, that's just the design process, and things change. Now, this could be a kit, I appreciate that. If anybody wants to do that with it, well, knock yourselves out. It's why I do these things, so people can use them. I put them onto Thingiverse, the way I put them onto Thingiverse to make them adaptable so that you can change them or play around with them or remix them and create what you want to create. I quite like the look of this, to be honest. Now, the astounding thing was, uh, I think it took about a day or so to design it and it took, I don't know, hour or so to actually cut out on the laser cutter. So the laser cutter was fast, did a really good job. It was nice, accurate parts with minimum burning. And I was really pleased with how that worked out at the end of the day. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. Remember, some of the parts in here can be reused for other machines like the gearing system. These would make great decorations. But, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.